بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اكس راح يفاتك بلاري تريجي as we know jaundice is the other discoloration of the skin and sclera and clinically would be appear in the sclera of the patient when the level of the serum bilirubin is above 2.5 mg per deciliter biliary atresia extrahepatic biliary atresia is one of the causes of the jaundice in the neonate which is of obstructive type it account for one per 12000 live birth يعني من كل 12000 طفل طفل يولد وعنده اكسترا هيباتيك بلاري اتريزيا اتريزيا مين اثري يعني القنوات الصفراويه تكون اثريه او ضامره and it affect both male and female equally the extra hepatic bile ducts are progressively destroyed by an inflammatory process which start around the time of the birth the etiology is unclear and the intrahepatic changes also occur and eventually result in biliary cirrhosis portal hypertension ascites and all the feature of the liver cirrhosis will appear in the patient with esophageal varices and the patient also may present with hematemesis and medina and if we only treat this patient this new net it will result in liver failure and death before the age of three and the type of the atresia can be classified into three types either atresia restricted to the common bile duct second type atresia of the common hepatic duct and the third type atresia of the right and left hepatic duct as you see here this is the gallbladder this is the cystic duct and this is the common hepatic duct right hepatic duct and left hepatic duct these ducts are not obliterated these ducts are patent so there is no atresia here and the atresia here in the common bile duct as you see here the common bile duct is very narrow duct تقريبا القناة الصفراء متحول إلى حبل أو خيط فقط so it is not patent and not allow for the bile to excrete from the liver to the duodenum so this is the type 1 the type 2 here we can see the common bile duct is atretic and the common hepatic duct also atretic and this is the third type where the common bile duct atletic the cystic duct also atletic common hepatic duct atletic right and left hepatic duct atletic the first one we call the this type of the atresia which involves just the common bile duct and the common hepatic duct is patent we call this type of the biliary atresia, this is the surgically correctable biliary atresia. And yani the atresia that involves the common hepatic duct and not involve the, the atresia that involves the common bile duct only, not involve the common hepatic duct. And there is part of the biliary tree outside the liver is patent. This type is surgically correctable type of the extra hepatic biliary atresia. We can do a bypass for the obliterated part of the biliary tree in this type of the extra hepatic biliary atresia, the type 1. The clinical feature. About one third of the patients are jaundice at birth. As we know, we have several causes of the jaundice at the time of the birth. One of them is the extrahepatic biliary atresia. 
Not all the cases with the biliary atresia were present with jaundice at the time of the birth. Only one third of the patient are jaundice at birth. Jaundice will appear by the end of the first week in all patients with the extra hepatic biliary tree. Yani the matla and the jaundice with the yomil awal in high to he will develop the jaundice and become deepened progressively. Liver function test show an obstructive pattern. يعني معناه الليبر فانكشن تيست وي كان سي ان ذا ليبر فانكشن تيست ذا توتال سيرم بيلوروبين دايركت تايب ويل بي انكريزد اند ذا دايركت تايب اوف ذا توتال سيرم بيلوروبين مين ذا انكريز ان ذا ليفر اوف ان ذا ان ذا سيرم ليفل اوف ذا كونجيكيتد بيلوروبين ذا كونجيكيتد بيلوروبين از انكريز مين ذا كوز اوف ذا جونز از اوبستراكتيف تايب Also, the alkaline phosphatase increase in the obstructive type of jaundice. Here we have the extrahepatic biliary tree, in which the alkaline phosphatase will be increased. Because the, 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 the bile will not reach to the meconium, to the uh, intestine, the meconium to start with may be bile stained. Later on, there is no bile stained meconium, and the meconium and the stool will be pale. And in the adult, when we have jaundice, obstructive jaundice in the adult, the stool will be gray color stool. يعني شكل الستول راح يكون مثل الطين. هنا بالنسبة للنيونيت, the color of the stool would be pale. Normally, the color of the stool is golden yellow after the end of the first week of life. The urine will become dark, or we call it tea color urine. Prolonged steatorrhea, because there is no bile in the intestine, and the bile important for the absorption of the fat. So the fat will be ins- within the stool, and this leads to steatorrhea. And this lead to deficiency of the vitamin D, which lead to formation of the what's called the biliary rickets. Biliary rickets, which is an osteomalacia in the neonate. We call it the biliary ricket because the cause of the ricket is deficiency of the bile in the intestine, which is important for the absorption of the fat soluble vitamin, and because Vitamin D is the fat soluble vitamin. There will be deficiency of the vitamin D, which is responsible for the for, for the biliary rickets. And due to deposition of the bile salt in the skin, this leads to pruritis, which is severe, and a clubbing of the finger and skin exanthomas. And this is related to the an increase in the serum cholesterol level. What are the differential diagnosis of the extra hepatic biliary atresia? And this may be any form of jaundice in the neonate, which lead to what's called the cholestatic jaundice. And we have several causes for this jaundice, which may be important differential diagnosis for the extra hepatic biliary atresia. One of them, first, the alpha antitrypsin deficiency, which is one of the inherited disease in the neonate, in which the, the problem is with, with, the, with the lung and the liver of the baby or the neonate. There will be destructive lung disease and emphysema in the neonate with the liver damage and liver cirrhosis. And we call this the alpha antitrypsin deficiency. The second one is the cholestasis associated with intravenous feeding. Any problem that prevents the baby to have oral feeding, like tracheoesophageal fistula or any other cause, bowel resection, this leads to what's called the cholestatic jaundice. Because there is no food in the intestine, 
and this food, and particularly the, the fat in the, in the duodenum, lead to se- secretion of the bile. And because they have no fat in the, in the, in the intestine, there will be no release of the enzy- enzyme called the cholecystokinin pancreozymine, which is responsible for the excretion of the bile and relaxation of the sphincter of Audi. So the patient will develop cholestasis, which look like the extra hepatic biliary atresia. The other differential diagnosis is the cholidocalcis. This will be discussed later on, which are one of the congenital anomaly of the biliary tree and lead to jaundice also. The other differential diagnosis is the inspecated bile syndrome. The bile will be thick and will cause obstruction to the biliary tree and the common bile duct and the patient would present with cholestatic jaundice which looked like the extrahepatic biliary atresia. And the fifth differential diagnosis is the neonatal hepatitis, is the, which is the most difficult one to differentiate from the extrahepatic biliary atresia, because both extrahepatic biliary atresia and neonatal hepatitis are associated with giant cell transformation of the hepatocyte. And the, the only way to differentiate both is by taking a liver biopsy. Treatment of the extrahepatic biliary atresia. Patent segments of the proximal bile duct are found only in 10% of type 1 biliary atresia. The type 1 biliary atresia, we call it the surgical surgically correctable biliary atresia, in which we will do anastomosis with the jujerum and a direct uh, rox and y hepatojujunostomy. We bring loop of the jujerum and suture it with the accessible part of the biliary tree, and this will achieve bypass for the obstruction. Yani, chattal biliary tree. Mechanical incident will, will be overcome by the direct anastomosis of the jejunum with the uh, extra hepatic part of the biliary tree, which is not obliterated. All we can do for them, for those who are with the type 2 and type 3, the only way to treat that such patient is by. Uh, doing liver transplant for them. Liver transplantation is the best treatment for those patients with called surgically non-correctable extra hepatic uh, biliary atresia. And there would be improvement in about 70 to 80 percent alive to five years following transplant. Yani al سبعين بالمئة إلى ثمانين بالمئة الأطفال يعيشون لعمر الخمس سنوات after double transplant. The other disease of the biliary tree, congenital disease of the biliary tree, is the cholecystokinin cyst, which is a cystic disease of the biliary system. We're also rare. And the cholecystokinin cysts are congenital dilatation of the intrahepatic and extrahepatic biliary system. The pathogenesis is unclear. With the extrahepatic biliary tree, the also the pathogenesis of the cholecystokinin cyst is not clear. Patient may present at any age with jaundice, fever, abdominal pain, and right upper quadrant mass. Jaundice, fever, also rigor, and these are the feature of Cholangitis. Cholangitis, which is inflammation of the biliary radicals, present with fever, rigor, and abdominal pain. And one of the feature, clinical feature of the cholodocal is the cholangitis. Six percent of the cases are diagnosed before the age of 10 years. Pancreatitis is not an infrequent presentation in adults. 
And the corridocal cyst may lead to pancreatitis. One of the cause of the pancreatitis is the corridocal cyst. Patients with corridocal cysts have an increased risk of developing cholangiocarcinoma. That's why any corridocal cyst should be excised. The NO corridocal cyst is a precursor for the cholangiocarcinoma. The predisposing factor for cholangiocarcinoma in the ch children is the corridocal cyst. So any corridocal cyst should be excised. The diagnosis is by ultrasound or by ultrasound or CT or MRI or MRCT. Radical resection of the cyst is the treatment of choice with reconstruction of the biliary tree using raw and Y loop of jejunum. And these are the type of the corridocal cyst. As you see, type 1A and B, this is the fuse cystic type, or we call it fusiform or secular type here. Fusiform and secular type, 1 and B. <coughs> or type B we have here, the what's called the diverticula of the common bile duct here. We have a diverticula of the common bile duct. While here in the type 3 we have the diverticula within the pancreas, within the head of the pancreas. While the type 5, we have extension, type 4 extension within the liver. Yeah, and the, the secular dilatation of the biliary tree are within the liver tissue. Or in type 5, we have only intrahepatic dilatation due to corridocal cysts. These are the types of the corridocal cysts. The commonest type is the type 1A and B, secular or fusiform type of the corridocal cyst. Now we we'll go to a very common disease, that's the gallstone, chorilithiasis. Gallstone are the most common biliary pathology. It is, it is estimated that gallstone affect 10 to 15 percent of the population in the Western societies. The percentage of the patients with gallstone increased in the last uh, decade. Yani, the risk of the gallstone is an increase. الناظور أو بطريقة الأوبن. بمعنى the risk and the percentage of the gallstone is increasing even in our country. The cause of the gallstone can be divided according to theories into three. The pathophysiology of the gallstone formation can be divided into metabolic theory before that, we, uh, we can classify the gallstone into three types, either cholesterol type, pigmented type, mixed stone. The cholesterol type, we call it the gallstone solitaire. That means the, there is usually single, large, smooth surface gallstone. So we call it the cholesterol we we'll call the cholesterol type of the gallstone the gallstone solitaire. Pigmented type usually brown and black. 
and we have the mixed type of the stone. Those patients with hemolytic jaundice, they develop pigmented type of the stone. The pathophysiology of the stone formation, either the metabolic theory, and the metabolic theory for cholesterol to remain in the solution, we need the bile acid. احنا بحاجة للبايل أسيد حتى يصير absorption للكوليسترول because the bile acid will be will change the fat molecule from a molecule that not be absorbed because it is hydrophilic because it is not hydrophilic because it is hydrophobic <coughs> يعني molecule that not be absorbed in the water. The bile acid and phospholipid and bile acid with the cholesterol will form what's called the micelle. The micelle is fat molecule with bile acid. The micelle is it's a fiber, it is hydrophilic particle. It is hydrophilic particle or molecule that can be absorbed and it's, uh, it's uh, formed by the uh, attachment of the bile acid to the fat molecule. Any cause that increase in the level of the cholesterol or decrease in the bile acid, this lead to a bile which is able to form the gallstone. We call this bile super saturated bile or we call the lithogenic bile and lead to formation of the gallstone so a lithogenic bile or a super saturated bile a bile in which the level of the cholesterol either high or the level of the bile acid is low either high cholesterol or a low bile acid this is super saturated bile or lithogenic bile which liable to form the gallstone. What are the causes of the lithogenic bile? A lithogenic bile can be caused by high caloric diet, excess intake of the carbohydrate. This lead to formation of the uh, supersaturated bile or lithogenic bile. Obesity. and the obesity, we have higher level of the cholesterol and triglyceride and this means the bile in those patients is lithogenic bile or supersaturated bile. Contraceptive pills and cholestyramine, or those lead to formation of the supersaturated or lithogenic bile. Resection of the terminal idiom, this will be a cause for the interruption of the anterior hepatic circulation of the bile. So this leads to decrease in the bile acid, and decrease in the bile acid leads to formation of the supersaturated or lithogenic bile. So the cause of the lithogenic bile is R of one high caloric diet, obesity, contraceptive pet and cholestyramine, drug or resection of the terminal ileum. The second cause, second theory behind the formation of the gallstone, the nidus of the infection which lead to aggregation of the nucleated cholesterol, crystal, and stone formation. And the third theory is stages of the bile lead to stone formation, methyl amaniatyl vigoto, many chances. In the peptic ulcer, luteinal or gastric ulcer, we perform vigotomy, and this vigotomy lead to decrease the motility of the of the stomach and the biliary tree and lead to stage of the bile and formation of the gallstone or those patients with total parental nutrition and they take their diet by intravenous way for any cause that prevent them from taking the diet orally or intrally with those patients with bowel resection bowel elastomosis bile leak or standard fistula, we give to those patients uh, the diet uh, by intravenous way, and those patients develop because they have no 
no, no fat in the duodenum, and there is no secretion of the bile, so they develop, uh, develop the cholestatic jaundice, and develop also, develop uh, gallstone later on. Pigmented stone, stones associated with hemolysis, hemolytic anemia, methyl, uh, spherocytosis, sickle cell anemia, thalassemia. This leads to destruction of the RBC and excess release of the uh, indirect bilirubin or unconjugated bilirubin, and this leads to formation of the uh, gallstone, which, which are a pigmented stone. The fifth theory behind the formation of the gallstone is stone formation related to the deconjugation of the, of the bilirubin by diglucuronide by bacterial glucuronidase that release glucuronidase enzyme. And insoluble unconjugated bilirubin precipitate and lead to formation of the uh, gallstone. The sixth cause of the Gallstone, forma gallstone formation is brown pigmented stone associated with the presence of the foreign body within the bile duct, such as parasite or stent. Stent will be common bile duct to overcome obstruction of the common bile duct, which could be due to tumor or due to stenosis of the common bile duct. And this is stones, stent of one would be uh, a nida, would form a nidus for the formation of the stone and the gallbladder or in the common viaduct or parasite like the parasitic infestation due to ascaris tumbricoid or cornerca sinus. These parasites, these, par these parasita parasite inhibitant for the biliary tree and cause a stage of the bile and formation of the gallstone. These are the type of the stone here. As you see the stone here facetted. clear multiple gallstone also another pigmented stone here here we can see the nidus of the stone due to infection here start infection here uh, lead to formation of the stone over a nidus of infection this is the gallbladder opened and the stones within the gallbladder. The clinical feature of patients with gallstone. We have what's called the 5F. A female, fertile, 40, fatty, and flatulent dyspepsia. 5F. Female more than male, fertile, yani multipara, and a uh, woman with more than one children, with one child, and uh, 40 years or 50 years of, of age, fatty, obese, and uh, the patient has petulance dyspepsia. These are the five F of the Goldstone. Goldstone presentation. The patient may be asymptomatic and on this type of gallstone we call it silent gallstone. A silent gallstone, gallstone without symptoms and sign. We discover that type of gallstone accidentally when we are performing an ultrasound for the abdomen of the patient for any other cause or the patient present with chronic cholestitis. In the chronic cholestitis, we have pain in the, in the epigastric or right hypochondrial region of the abdomen. This pain radiating to the back and to the interscapular region and to the right shoulder, aggravated by fatty meal, associated with nausea and vomiting, and belching and dyspepsia, and particularly the flatulence dyspepsia. On examination of this patient, there will be tenderness in the epigastric and right hypochondrium. 
or the patient present with acute cholecystitis. Acute cholecystitis, the other type of presentation of patient with gallstone. And acute cholecystitis, we have pain which will be more severe than the pain in the chronic cholecystitis and pain lasting more than 12 hours and the abdomen will be tender with muscle guarding and rigidity with a positive Murphy sign. Murphy sign means that you put your left hand on the right costal margin and the lower costal margin of the right side of the patient and the thumb, your thumb would be in the subcostal space on the fundus of the gallbladder and we ask the patient to take a deep breath. At the zenith of the inspiration, the patient would catch his breath because the fundus of the inflamed gallbladder will touch the parietal peritoneum and develop pain. This is a positive Murphy sign which is usually positive in the acute cholecystitis. Or a both sign, this means hyperesthesia between nine and 11 rep posteriorly in the back, on the right side of the patient. This hyperesthesia can be described by the patient as that the patient cannot withstand even the weight of the cloth. يعني المريض يحس حتى الملابس مالته من الطخ المنطقة ال area between the nine and eleven rib posteriorly he will develop pain from even touch of the cloth. This is called uh, called the both sign. And if he did for the patient uh, complete blood picture, there will be leukocytosis with elevated also liver enzyme and liver function tests. What are the differential diagnosis of gallstone? Commonly, common differential diagnosis, acute appendicitis, perforated peptic ulcer, acute pancreatitis. A rare cause of the differential, diagno differential diagnosis of the gallstone is the acute pyelonephritis, myocardial infarction, and pneumonia, a right lower pneumonia. What are the complications of the gallstone? Either biliary colic, which is severe pain, severe colicky intermittent pain, and the right hypochondrium radiated to the back and to the shoulder. And the other complication is the acute cholecystitis, the third complication, chronic cholecystitis, and the fourth complication is the empyema of the gallbladder. If we have a stone impacted in the neck of the gallbladder at the cystic duct, it leads to formation of a pouch called the Hartmann pouch. Hartmann pouch is a pathological type of pouch. It's not an anatomical pouch. And this is due to impaction of stone in the neck of the gallbladder. At first, the bile would cause the station of the gallbladder and the bile will be absorbed when the bile absorbed the only mucus will retain in the gall in the gallbladder this, this leads to formation of the mucosine and when the mucosine invaded by the microorganism and lead to formation of pus within the gallbladder this is called the empyema of the gallbladder those patients with empyema of the gallbladder will present to you with tenderness pain and tenderness in the right hypochondrium with a palpable tender mass with fever and rigor. The other complication is the mucosine. In the mucosine, we have uh, just palpable gallbladder in the right hypochondrium with the previous history of gallstone. The other complication is the perforation. Perforation of the, gall of the gallbladder is rare due to gallstone. Only when we have infection with a special type of microorganism like, like the Clostridia vulture infection with gangrene of the gallbladder. This leads to perforation of the gallbladder. When we have perforation of the gallbladder, there will be biliary peritonitis later on, bacterial peritonitis, and septicemia. Biliary obstruction. 
stone from the common by deck from the gallbladder goat will be descend to the common by deck and to the lower end of the common by deck lead to obstructive jaundice. Acute cholangitis where we have pain, fever, or rigor and jaundice. And this is called the charcot triad. Charcot triad means fever, rigor, pain and jaundice. These are complications of the gallstone. Acute pancreatitis. During the passage of the stone from the gallbladder to the common bile duct to the intestine, it would cause obstruction to the pancreatic duct. And this obstruction to the pancreatic duct leads to triggering of the pancreatic enzyme lead to acute pancreatitis. And the last complication is the intestinal obstruction by the gallstone ileus. A stone from the gallbladder will pass to the duodenum through a abnormal communication be between the gallbladder and the duodenum, which is called the cholecystic duodenal fistula. And this stone will, will be obstructed, will be increased in size due to presence of the uh, fecal concretion around the stone and become larger and larger, then will be uh, impacted in the narrowest part of the small intestine, which is about two feet from the ileocecal junction, and lead to what's called the gallstone ileus or the gallstone colic. These are the complications of the gallstone. Diagnosis of the gallstone by history and physical examination, ultrasound, or a scan or MRC. Treatment, treatment of symptomatic gallstone is surgery. It is safe to observe patient with asymptomatic gallstone, but the indication of cholestectomy in asymptomatic gallstone are, يعني مريضة at a gallstone without symptoms and sign. شو كتر عن سوي العملية? So we have indication to interfere to the, in those patients with gallstone without symptom and sign. Indication of cholestectomy in asymptomatic gallstone are. In diabetic patient, in diabetic patient or immunocompromised patient because more liable or more prone to complication. They are more prone to cholestitis and acute cholestitis, even septicemia due to presence of the gallstone. Second, stone more than 2.5 cm in diameter. Large stone lead to irritation of the epithelium of the gallstone and mucosa of the gall often of the gallbladder. This irritation of the gallbladder mucosa lead to metaplasia and they are able to develop malignancy later on. Porcelain gallbladder, which carry risk of malignancy in 25 percent. This means a uh, Calcification of the wall of the gallbladder that can be seen by the ex plain X-ray of the abdomen. We call it porcelain gallbladder. Therefore, for malignancy, that's why we should uh, do colostectomy even if the patient without symptom and sign of gallstone. Those with congenital hemolytic anemia, when, when we are doing, doing for them septinectomy. Septinectomy, at the same time, we will go to do colostectomy for them even if the patient have no symptom and sign of the gallstone presence. Those patients who are undergoing bariatric surgery for morbid obesity, because those are able to develop later on develop gallstone, so we'll go to do for them cholestectomy, even if we have cholestectomy, even if they have stone without any sign and symptom. Conservative treatment of acute cholestitis. More than 90% of the cases with symptoms of acute cholestitis subside conservatively by non-operative methods, depending on the nothing by mouth, intravenous fluid, and antibiotic. And the antibiotic usually use the third generation sevalsporin, sevalsorin, sevaroxine, and gentamicin and the subsequent management when the temperature and pulse and the physical signs show that the inflammation is subsiding, oral fluid will be start, and later on we will proceed to do for them uh, cholestectomy. The timing 
of surgery in acute structure remain controversial. يعني شو كت نسوي العملية in patient with acute cholestasis. The 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 this decision depend on certain schools. One early cholestasis during acute cholestasis appear to be safe and shorten the total hospital stay. Provide that the operation is undertaken within four, five to seven day of the onset of the attack. The conversion rate in laparoscopic cholestasis is higher in acute than elective surgery. طبعا اذا نسوي عمليه المريض with acute cholestasis ممكن يكون ال the surgery is difficult due to presence of the edema, the acute inflammatory process, adhesion to the bowel. That's why laparoscopic surgery may change to open surgery in those patients in a higher rate. يعني عدد المرضى اللي نحولوا من لاب الى اوبن ان اكيد كل ستاتس مور ذان ذا كرونيك ستاتس. If an early operation is not indicated, one should that wait for approximately for six weeks for the inflammation to subside before operation. اذا the first option we have early colostectomy. اذا يعني مريض عنده اكيد كل ستاتس راح نسوي له كل ستاتومي within five to seven days. بس هنا نتوقع ال conversion rate from lab to the open is higher. Or we will wait for six weeks. ننتظر شهر ونص يلا نسوي العملية هنا طبعا راح تكون the operation is easier. The, the, the conversion rate from lab to open is less. Cholestectomy. Type of the cholestectomy. We have either conventional open approach or laparoscopic. Cholestectomy, we call it lab coli. مختصر معناته lab coli mean laparoscopic cholestectomy. How we prepare? How we prepare the patient for surgery? We by doing full blood count, renal profile and liver function test, prothrombin type, chest X-ray, ECG, antibiotic prophylaxis, deep vein thrombosis prophylaxis. يعني مثلا نطيم anexpirin or other measures to prevent thrombosis. Informed consent. نأخذ التوقيع مع المريض وأهل المريض بإجراء العملية. The golden rule in colostectomy, open or lab, is the identification of the color triangle. And point in the إجراء عملية lab coli or open colostectomy, you know, we identify the color triangle. As we know, the color triangle bounded by the cystic duct, common hepatic duct, and liver. The anomaly of the biliary tree or the vascular anomaly can be seen within the colored triangle. Lab coli. طبعا lab coli راح اشرح لكم اياها محاضرة منفصلة later on. The patient with few points about the lab coli, the patient will be in supine position with general anesthesia with anti transdemper position with tilt to the left. And black and pneumoperitoneum, yani ninfakh al batan gaz, tani kshid al carbon, to perform a room for surgery, epigastric port, then a whole surgeon port, or mediclavicular port for the surgery, additional port for the assistant. Yani rahan khadi, and so we tlatha or arba portat, arba tlatha or arba opening of the abdomen. Abdominal wall after insufflation of the abdomen with the CO2, then we identify the triangle of the colloid, then we go proceed to do uh, cholestectomy by laparoscope. Open cholestectomy indication of the open cholestectomy indication of the open cholestectomy for patients whom laparoscopic approach is not indicated or in whom The conversion from laparoscopic approach is required. يعني either from the start رح نسوي لهم إحنا نقرر نسوي العملية by open method. You know, may تحمل العملية by laparoscope. Either the patient have a cardiopulmonary problem that prevent the 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 make the general anesthesia risky for the patient, or We are proceeding with the lab coli, laparoscopic approach, then we change it to, we convert to open uh, because they have a problem within the 
with, with this patient because of the presence of the adhesion or because the anatomy is obscured or the color triangle is not well clear or we have a vascular or biliary anomaly that prevent the laparoscopic surgery to progress. So start to change to open method. In the open method, we either do a midline or uh, right upper transverse incision or cocher incision, the subcostal incision, and we approach to the cholestectomy. It is the left hand of it is the left hand of the assistant that doing the operation or all the work. إذا مالت المساعد هي راح تساعدني لإجراء عملية هي تسوي كل الشغل مالت ال open colostomy because without this hand we cannot see the field بدون إيد ال إيد المساعد مالت النسرة اللي تدفع به الباول away away from the gallbladder I will not proceed for to complete the colostomy هاي صورة نشوف هنا how a gallstone in the S4, high gallbladder, we have stones, higher cholesterol to duodenal fistula. These stones pass to the duodenum, from the duodenum to the duodenum and to the ileum, and the two feet from the ileocecal junction, which is the narrowest part of this small intestine here, will, the stone will impact it and lead to what's called the gallstone ileus. And thank you very much.